What's happening ladies and gentlemen, this is Min for Architecture Inspirations. Today I'm gonna show you what's new in Inkscape 3.3. Let's get started. Number one, site context. Understanding the local context is important for creating a good building design. In Inkscape 3.3, the new site context feature enables you to import geometry and topology from real world sites to your renders. To use it, click this button on the Inkscape window or press O on your keyboard. Next, click on Add Site Context. Then you will see a new window pop up. Here is the current location, and up here, you can type in the address or the coordinates of the real world location that you want to import. On the map, you can drag it to move around. And you can also zoom in and out with these buttons. If you drag the pin, you will be able to move the location of your model on the map, which will also be updated over here on the left side. The next button will let you recenter the camera on the location. And finally, the last button will move the crop area to fit the location. Next, you can crop the import area by adjusting this rectangle here. Note that the minimum area you could choose is 100 meters by 100 meters, and the maximum is 10,000 by 10,000 meters. On the bottom left of the window, you can choose which type of data you want to import, such as buildings and landmarks, streets and sidewalks, and topography. For this example, I will import the location of the World Trade Center building in New York. I'm good with this area of the map, so I will click here to import. It will take a while to import the site context data depending on how much data is being imported. After it's imported, you can move around to see the site context. And as you can see, the geometry and topography are only imported into Enscape and not into your CAD software. If you click on a part of the site, it will show you more information on the left sidebar. This list will show you the different streets and the buildings on those streets. If you hover the mouse over a street or a building, it will be highlighted in the Enscape window. I will click on this building, and as you can see, that's the one World Trade Center building. To hide it, I can click on this icon, but I will keep it visible for now. Next, I will click here and go to Edit Site Context. Here I can move and rotate the site so that it fits my model. Then click here to save the changes. Instead of positioning and rotating the site after import to fit your model, you can position your project before importing if you know its exact location on the map. Just use this pin and this handle to move and rotate the project into position. As you can see, the new site context feature will help add context to your building which will make your design more realistic and helps to understand what the building will look like on the site. Number 2. Alpha Channel Export The next new feature in Inkscape 3.3 it's the ability to export the alpha channel of your render, which by default will be saved as a separate image, so you can use it in post-production software like Photoshop to remove the background of your render. Alternatively, you can go to the output tab in the visual settings and check this box to apply the alpha channel to the image itself, so when you export the render as a PNG, the image will have the alpha channel already applied and ready to go. In this case, it will make it even faster to add a custom background in Photoshop. Number 3. Education Assets and Materials like in every new version of Enscape, there are always new assets being added to the library. In this update, Enscape has provided a new collection of Education 3D objects and materials. These objects include new people assets, classroom furniture such as tables and chairs, as well as classroom supplies, and even musical instruments. Number 4. Material Override Next is the Material Override function, which allows you to override an existing material with a material in the Enscape material library. To use it, just open the material editor, and select the material that you want to change. Next, click on the three dots and select Replace with Enscape Material. Now you can select a material from the Enscape Material Library and you will see it update in the Enscape window. This new feature makes replacing materials so much easier and allows you to test different materials in your design a lot quicker. Number 5. Improved Reflections The reflections have also been improved in this version of Enscape now you can see transparent materials in the reflection which makes your renders more realistic. Note that this is only available for graphics cards that support ray tracing such as the NVIDIA RTX and the AMD Radeon RX 6000 series. And also the new features in Enscape 3.3, there are also other features and updates such as Always on Top, Camera Sync Optimization, Upload Migration, and even the option to change the language to Japanese. If you want to read more about these updates, then go to the link below. Also, I want to mention that Enscape will be available for Mac soon, so if you are interested, you can sign up for the email list to find more about it. Anyway, that's all for today guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Comment below if you have any questions. Stay inspired guys, and I'll see you next time.